Hello friends, how are we doing? So I have recently been feeling like I don't do a lot of book recommendation videos. Sometimes I do like specific ones for genres, but I don't do a ton of just like book recommendations. <laughs> and I've just been feeling like I wanna do more of them because obviously I do a lot of reading vlogs, but I wanna share with you maybe some books that I haven't talked about in a while or I loved in the past. I was thinking, how can I do this in a fun way? And then I remembered there's a website of reading prompts, which I did a vlog with earlier this year. It was made by another booktuber, Chantelle Reads All Day. I'll leave her link down below. Yeah, I did a whole vlog where these reading prompts picked what I read. And I thought, let's like uno reverse it. <laughs> and use the reading prompts, but as like prompts for me to give you a book recommendation. I thought that would be fun. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I always think this website is such a fun way to pick what you read if you're like in a reading slump or anything. So I would really recommend, I'll leave it linked down below. If you guys are in a slump, I think it's such a fun way to pick what you read. I am gonna just preface this by saying there may be some prompts I can't like give uh, a book recommendation for it might be like random number generate or a new to you author or something I can't do that so we'll have to just skip those also the book I pick for that reading prompt is not necessarily like if it's mixed media for example it's not necessarily like my number one mixed media book it's just the first thing that comes to mind we're going off pure instincts here <laughs> so are we ready I'm really excited I think this is gonna be so much fun it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be good, good and we're all gonna have fun, fun. <laughs> Okay. So with the reading prompts, you can either pick a card or do like um, a spinny wheel. I think let's pick a card first. First book recommendation is award winner. Oh shit. Actually, no, I know, I know, I know. Cause I looked at this yesterday when I was filming another video. Strange case of Alchemist Daughter. Mm, yep. Yup, 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 yup. What did it win? Winner of the Locus Award for Best First Novel. Don't know what that is, but it's an award winner. Another recommendation I think of a lot when I think of award winner is um, the fifth season. I think the whole of this series won the Hugo Awards. Yeah, this one definitely did. All three books won the Hugo, which is like unheard of. I, I know I need to continue on with this series, guys. I find it like an intimidating one. So these are both top recommendations. You know, guys, this is like one of my favorite books of all time. Okay, this is one of my favorite series of all time. I just spoke about it in my last video, so like, we don't need to talk about it again, but like best book of all time. <laughs> Gorgeous, gothic, Victorian, monstrous women. And then the fifth season, oh, I can never talk about this one without spoiling it. I gave it four stars. This wasn't like a favorite favorite, but um, I can recognize N.K. Jemison, perhaps as one of the best authors alive right now. It is about, uh, let me. Uh, <laughs> if I speak, I am in, in big trouble in big trouble. We're following three different women slash girls. There's like a young child, there's three different women and there's like this world ending thing happening. This is the way the world ends for the last time. End of the world, it is pretty good. It is pretty good and I know, oh shit. I know I need to continue with the rest of the series. I'm just scared, okay? Okay, get another prompt. This card. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Published before 1900. I don't read a lot of classics anymore, guys. I know I should. I don't know, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I haven't read Pride and Prejudice since I was like, how old was I? 10? But I'm gonna reread it soon. I'm just gonna say Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I went on holiday recently, you'll see it in a vlog this weekend, and where we were staying just got me really in the mood for Pride and Prejudice. Like, we were staying near the house in the Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice version, which I don't recognize, it's not my one, Colin Firth is my one, but anyways. Mr. Darcy's house, where we were staying, was like 10 minutes away from us, so it's that kind of vibe. So it just got me in the mood, I'm just thinking Pride and Prejudice. Okay, next one. Middle grade, ooh! Okay, what's my favorite, there's many middle grades that I've enjoyed. My first thought, was oh i love how it's right at the bottom of this stack don't you just love that amari and the night brothers by bb alston i do own the sequel to this as well haven't read it yet but this is such a good middle grade we're following amari whose brother has recently gone missing and she finds out that he worked this like bureau for supernatural investigation supernatural affairs that's it and she finds out that she has magic and it's just it was so good it was one of my favorite middle grades i've ever read i loved it i have such a it's one of those books that i have a really vivid memory of reading i sat in a waterstones cafe like the whole day and read it and i love when you have such a vivid memory of reading a book this is like top tier middle grade in my opinion it has that magic a middle grade that is perfect for a child it has that kind of like magical setting it has like relatable characters i think i would love it as a child but also i think like i love it now so we're gonna spin the wheel now let's spin the wheel <laughs> what's it gonna be <laughs> it is 
Oh, highest rated on my TBR. We can't do that. Well, actually, should we see what the highest rated is on my TBR and whether I recommend it or not? That's quite fun. Well, we're not doing the we're not doing highest rated on my TBR. We'll do the highest book that I've read. I did do this a while ago as like a video, maybe like a year or two ago. Um, but I don't think it's changed that much. So number of pages, average rating. Oh. <laughs> Cut the cameras. Dead ass. No, where even is that? I've like hidden it somewhere. Have I hidden it here? Oh my God, the gag. Oh my God. Highest rated book I've ever read. Girl, we don't even need to talk about it. Oh, woo. <laughs> if you haven't seen the vlog that I did for this yet, go check it out. Uh, yeah, no. No, 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 no. Everyone's like, oh, Megan, you're acting as if you're the outlier by hating it because like everyone I've seen has not liked it. Well, look at the average rating, 4.67. Are you freaking having a laugh? The highest rated book above Jade Legacy, above Hearts of the Volume 4, Insanity. 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 Oh, I don't. Even, I actually don't have words. We're not going to talk about it. Also, there's something I'm very self-conscious about. I've just got level with you. I don't think you can see it, but I'm worried that when I turn my back, you're gonna see it, okay? I went on holiday recently. <laughs> You'll see it in this weekend's vlog. I burnt my scalp really badly, and now my scalp is flaking. It's not dandruff. If you see, like, skin, <laughs> it's not dandruff. It is my burnt scalp flaking off and repairing itself. So no judgment, please, thank you. Get another prompt, we'll spin again. This is so much fun. <laughs> So that last one wasn't a recommendation. I do recommend Jade Legacy though, which was number two. What is this? Oh, an ugly cover. A book that I love that has an ugly cover. Everyone say hello to the bin men outside. Noisy AF. Okay, that's fine. It gives me a chance to think. What has an ugly ass cover? But I love the book. I feel like I just don't like books with ugly covers. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I think my answer is going to be The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I don't like this cover. I love this book. I don't, I just don't like thriller, UK thriller covers. Like also Shari Lapina's ones. I don't know if you guys think these are ugly. To me, they're ugly. Especially when like with UK thrillers, you look at the US versions of the covers and they're just so much nicer. Like these, maybe they're not ugly, but they're boring. And that, same offense. <laughs> I don't know, just like, they love yellow and blue in UK thrillers, and I just hate it. I hate, like, all of Shari Lupina's books look the same. How boring. In my opinion, that's boring. I know, like, Janice Hallett, for example, her books look the same, but they're, like, cool. These are just boring. That's my opinion! One word title. Okay. Oh, first, first thought, first thought, first thought. I don't even need to think. Don't wanna get lipstick on it. Sadie by Courtney Summers. I keep thinking about this book. I just keep thinking about it lately. I just, I love it. I haven't reread it in a long time. I read this before I even had my channel, but I know I need to do a reread soon because you guys know I love Courtney Summers. <laughs> Sadie, you all, you all know Sadie. Sadie's sister has recently died and she is hunting for the man who killed her sister. Then in the present day, Sadie has also gone missing and we've got a podcaster investigating Sadie going missing. This book, is incredible. The best, still to this day, one of the best examples of a podcast, especially in an audiobook, because I originally just read this for the audio, still to this day, one of the best examples of a podcast in a book. I feel like everyone has started using podcasts and they're just not like, they're, they're just using it because podcasts are trendy, not, not because it really truly serves the story like it does in this. I'd like to know what, I was talking about this with my patrons, like what books did podcasts before Sadie? Because I feel like Sadie was like one of the first. I just think it's incredible. I know, I need to reread it soon. Oh my God. I still vividly remember finishing this book and I never, it was one of the first audiobooks I ever loved. And I remember just sitting there on my bed, like the audiobook had stopped and I was just frozen in time. I was like, shook. I like ran to my mom. I was like, mom, you would not believe what I just read. Which I never, like I never really have that strong a reaction, but it got me, it got me. Get another prompt, we'll pick a card. Bam, written by two authors. Um, interesting. I was just talking about this in my last video, actually, with the Ravens, but have I got anything that I would recommend over that? So I just recently spoke in my last video about underrated series about The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I do think this is severely underrated. It's witchy, YA, set at university, in a sorority. It's really good, okay? I really enjoyed it. I think it's solid YA. But 
if I'm honest with you, my favourite book written by two authors, or my favourite series, is the Illuminae series, written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I read this, I think, also before I had my channel. It's sci-fi that is entirely mixed media. It's told through chats, through logs, through all this stuff. I try not to recommend <laughs> this series anymore on my channel, because I know, you know, Jay Kristoff, mm, you know. There's a lot, there's a lot going on there, okay? There's a lot going on there. I tend not to recommend this anymore, but if I don't wanna lie to you, this is my favorite series written by two authors, okay? That's the truth, that's the truth, but we'll just move on. I mean, I'm not telling you to go read it, but I loved this series when I read it. They were all five stars to me. I think Gemina, the second one, was my favorite, but um, yeah, and still to this day, one of my favorite sci-fi I've ever read, but we're moving on. Oh my God, has any of you, have any of you ever read, seen on Goodreads? I think it was particularly for Interview the Vampire. Jay Kristoff like wrote a review <laughs> himself for his book, which is fine. Like usually you see an author give it five stars, whatever. It's like an essay. I'm not gonna say anything about it. I'm polite. Were you silent or were you silenced? A biography. What's my favourite biography? What have I read that would like count as a biography? I'm not gonna bother getting it out because it's the bottom of my <laughs> of my non-fiction shelf, but probably Becoming by Michelle Obama. I feel like that's a basic ass answer. You don't need me to recommend Becoming by Michelle Obama, do you? But that's that's an autobiography, isn't it? I don't know if I've ever read like a because a biography has to be about one person, right? I don't think I've ever read a biography, really. Moving on, next one. Oh, a nature word in the title, wind, snow, leaf, sea. Uh, <laughs> would like, I thought of, would winter? Does winter and like bear and nightingale, do they count? Because I love this series, I feel like I don't recommend it to you enough. I will have to. I've already reread this series once, but this was a very important. Does winter count? Winter. I feel like seasons and nature. Winter. Nature is affected by the seasons. Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. <laughs> We're going with it. It was my first thought. This is the last of the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy. I've already read this, reread this once. I did a, I hosted like a reread readathon of it like many years ago. But this was a very important series to me when I was getting back into reading. If you don't know, I used to read a lot when I was a child. Then just because of like school, really, I was a very school person. And I think I stopped reading for like years 11, 12 and 13 of school, really. I didn't, I stopped reading. Then I just, when I was, I think it was when I was particularly my first year of uni, I got back into to reading and this series was another one I have a vivid memory of reading I think the last one I was on holiday in Lincoln in like a house anyways you know guys I need to know that I just love when I have memories of reading books very important series for me getting back into reading I just fell into the series I think it's such a great beginner fantasy if you don't read fantasy one of the best I think beginner fantasy series because it's quite contained we're following Vasya in old Russia when there's house spirits and magic and it's oh it's beautiful it's beautiful i am beyond excited for katherine arden's next book i don't know when it's coming out maybe next year i just adore it is winter a nature word i don't know we're counting it okay next one that one please a book with a map the first one that comes to mind is like six of crows i mean i love six of crows and crooked kingdom they have maps they have maps they have other maps or is that the only map is there a different map at the back Oh yeah, there's one of the ice court as well. They have maps. There we go. <laughs> Again, you don't need me to recommend Six of Crows or Crooked Kingdom to you, but I love them. I think they're great. Miss Lee Bardugo and me, we have an interesting relationship, but these three here, Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom and Ninth House, are, they are impeccable. Yes, I know I need to read Hellbent, guys. Don't even talk to me about it. I don't know when I'm doing it. Okay. An author's debut. I've been thinking about this a lot with music. What's the best, <laughs> well, I'm stalling for time. What's the best like debut song? I want to suggest a curveball. If anyone knows All Rise by Blue, <laughs> I've been really into that lately. <laughs> it's like, they're like singing about as if they're like at court with a girl they're breaking up with and they're like, uh, it's, it's great. Anyways, <laughs> The Poppy War by Eye of Kwang. I mean, like she was freaking 18, like come off it, genuinely come off it. What the fuck? <laughs> That's like, I guess, the first one that comes to mind. Is there any other ones? 
that I've read. Well, I read a lot of debuts, but like what stands out, I was like, oh my God, that's like a fucking bonkers debut. I mean, also the love hypothesis. <laughs> that's kind of a funny answer, but like, come on. I guess the Poppy War. The Poppy War is the one that I find craziest. Like, Rebecca, <laughs> if I could be one ounce of the woman you are, <laughs> I would be content. <laughs> like how? Anyways, non-fiction. Non-fiction, I just came off it straight away. <laughs> non-fiction. Okay, let's give you two recommendations of non-fictions I think about a lot. Also Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gabe, that's kind of like memoirs. I'm more thinking with non-fiction like something about a topic, right? So the two non-fictions I probably think about the most to this day are the five. This is the stories of the woman who were killed by Jack the Ripper. I think Hallie Rubenhold has done a incredible job of researching these women. These women were women living in poverty and she has done an incredible job of finding out about their lives. When Jack the Ripper's victims were being killed, they were all stereotyped as sex workers. And I think one was and one had been in the past, but the rest, there's no evidence they had ever been or were sex workers. Now, not that there's something inherently bad about being a sex worker, but especially in Victorian times, like that, that is used to diminish a woman's worth and like, you know, it's less bad that he's killing them because like, who gives a, you know what I mean? That's like the attitude of the time. And so by telling their real stories, I just think it's incredibly revolutionary. It's one that I think about a lot. I think she did an incredible job. They lived in poor areas, right? They lived, a lot of them lived in the same area that is poor had a lot of like kind of uh hotels esque that you just like stay at for a week or you pay your way you know and so that's what they were stereotyped as and then one of my favorite non-fictions that i i've read i think also before i started my channel this is good i'm recommending you some books that i read a long time ago is natives race and class in the ruins of empire by akala i think if you live in the uk this should be like mandatory reading. It really goes into how our perception of race in the UK is skewed by our history of empire. You know, I think a lot of uh, like American books surrounding race are very Americanized and that's not necessarily a bad thing because that is something that has to be unpacked. But this is very Brit focused and it's my favorite. I've read quite a few like Brit focused race books and this is I think by far the best. It's kind of semi-autobiographical, he talks a lot about his personal experiences but also talks about the history of empire, how it bleeds into our policing, how it bleeds into our education, so many different things. So this is definitely a non-fiction I think about a lot. Okay let's do one more. Set on a different continent. Hmm. What's my favorite? It doesn't have to be my favorite, it just has to be one that I think of. I was gonna tell you about the book I've just read, <laughs> you'll see in this weekend's vlog, but I wanna spoil that for you. So, what am I gonna go for? Let's look up in my contemporary, because there's no point. There's no point looking in fantasy, because they're fantasy. <laughs> and I don't wanna go for just America. I know that is a different continent for me, but I wanna go for something else. Um, or North America, I should say. So this is set in the Dominican Republic, Capra New Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I love Elizabeth Acevedo. I love Elizabeth, I can't speak. My love is overflowing. <sighs> she is exquisite. I love her. I love her and I love her even more. I know Family Law has just come out by Elizabeth Acevedo and I know I need to get to it. But this one, Cup on Your Land, we're following two girls who share the same father and the, they don't know and their father passes away. He used to kind of visit the one who lives in the Dominican Republic. It's a story of both of their grief and losing their father they didn't know like had this whole other side to him and their sisterhood and their relationship. I remember reading this, this was, I read right at the start of the pandemic when I was, we lived at Tom's for a while and I remember reading this in the garden there. God, I love memories. Make a memory, <laughs> make a memory. And this is one of Elizabeth Acevedo's books told in verse, which I just think she is perhaps the best at. Her and Dean Atta. I love the Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. That's told in verse as well. I just think they are the best. They're the best, they're the best, they're the best, they're the best. They're so good. So yeah, this is a definitely emotionally heavy hitting. Again, you don't really need me to recommend Elizabeth Acevedo to you, but I do feel like this was like big when it came out and then I've not really heard anyone speak about it. So if it does intrigue you, go pick it up. You don't always just have to read new releases, guys. We can read like, this is like an old classic favorite. It's not old, it's like 2020 or something, but it's so good. 
And I think everyone should read all of Elizabeth Avedo's stuff because I love them all. I've loved them all. My favourite is With the Fire on High, which isn't actually Todd and Verse, but I think that's set in America, right? I'm pretty sure that's not set. Well, I guess it is a different continent, but I wanted to go something that wasn't Europe or <laughs> North America. That was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this little <laughs> me getting reading prompts and giving you book recommendations based off of those. It was kind of chaotic because I couldn't prepare and there's probably books I could have said for different ones that like, it's probably like another book that's set on a different continent that's like one of my favorite books ever and I'm, I'm losing it. So <laughs> anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and there's nothing more to say. I will see you very soon in another video and I love you and bye. <laughs>